Ho, 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 and welcome to the Brutal Foods Christmas Special. Fashionably late, as usual. No matter what your calendar says today, it's Christmas time when you're watching this video. Today is Christmas. I don't really know why my holiday episodes are always late. Uh, I've decided to just embrace it. So here we go. Today we are going to be making the so cute and so fun poppin' cookin' kawaii gummy land. Kawaii, kawaii. And I'm kind of just now realizing that this doesn't actually have anything to do with Christmas. It was Christmas time, I bought it in a store, and I guess the candy cane stripes down the side really red as holly and jolly to me, so I picked it up. Uh, but I guess the only thing Christmassy here today is really me and the decorations. At any rate, let's get started checking out this uh, poppin' cookin' uh, kawaii. 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 Yeah, if you take away the peppermint stripes on the outside, the box really doesn't read Christmas at all. It reads more preschool. You got a teddy bear, you got a shooting star, a toy train. I feel like it's been a little while since I've read reviews on my channel, so I've looked up a few to read uh, to really get us in a mood before we start this witch kind of mood. Rotem says, it was very testy and fun. Marlena says, perfetto. And Lincoln Wink says, wow, I wish I can buy this. Some important rules on the bottom here. Adult supervision and assistance required. Make sure to follow the instructions. It's kind of cool that it comes in a little uh, peppermint stripe bag, but again, it's, it's reading more and more preschool the more I look at it which is fine. I mean, preschoolers are allowed to have things made for them. Uh, it just makes me feel old, which I, I don't like. Well, this makes me feel like a grown adult. Okay, so the full kit includes some pink cookie cutters. I guess we're making candy, so they're not really cookie cutters so much as candy shapers. We got a piece of paper, a piece of plastic, a bigger piece of plastic, and four different colored uh, mystery pouches. I guess I can't call these mystery pouches anymore because I can actually read what's on here. We got gummy candy powder and then three different color powders to change colors. Great job explaining that one. All right, the piece of paper is just, it's, just some mountains. <laughs> I guess I thought it would be more uh, gummy land themed. Uh, it just looks like a crappy postcard. Maybe it's, maybe it's a postcard from gummy land. I don't know. Instructions. Lemon, grape, and soda flavors. Wash your hands well. Prepare a glass of water. Is the first part an instruction? I don't know how to do that. Too lazy to get up and wash my hands. I did, however, prepare a glass of water, so we're ready to go. So this is kind of interesting. This is one of 12 different mold sets. So that means if I were to buy this again, I might get a different set of candy shapes to make. I don't really know if it's gonna be worth purchasing again just for different shapes, but maybe it will be. Okay, first thing we gotta do is pop out the shapes from the plastic trash. It's not too difficult to do. Honestly, it's pretty easy, but if you're not as strong as I am, uh, I don't know, you might you might have some issues with it. Okay, so that was pre prepare, learn how to use the dropper. You might think you know how to use one of these, but they can be pretty complicated. So it's good that they included really detailed instructions here. Step one, crush. Step two, soak. Step three, release. And step four, squeeze softly. Now that we've learned how to use the dropper tool, you might think it's time to dive right in and get cooking, uh, but we've got one more thing to do. We gotta practice, of course. We don't wanna mess up our dropper technique mid-recipe, so before we do that, let's go ahead and do the practice they recommend. That 
was marginally helpful. I don't know that I really learned anything doing it, but I, I am more confident that I could fill up to the line. I was pretty confident before, but now I'm uh, more confident. Oh wait, that wasn't even practice. They call it practice, but this is literally step one. I mean, you have to fill this up before you can mix the powders. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is making our primary colors. On top of being colored powder, I actually think that these are flavored. It doesn't say so on the packaging, but up at the top, it does say lemon, grape, and soda flavors. So I would assume lemon, grape, and soda flavored, right? By the way, you also need scissors for this. They don't tell you that you need scissors, but I don't know how else you're gonna tear these things open. Weird. Weird. Does that seem a little too yellow for anyone? For some reason, it looks just a little too yellow for me. It smells really good, though. It does smell a little bit like Lemon Pledge, but in all fairness, Lemon Pledge smells a little tasty, too. Red goes next. I don't like that. Oh, that smells like grape. It smells like grape. I didn't think the red one would be great. So what's the blue one? The blue one is soda? It does smell pretty much like grape though, like a grape juice. <laughs> I don't like that. Oh. I don't even know what that one. <laughs> is it supposed to be soda? I'm lost. I think the last one is supposed to be soda. I don't know what kind of soda, uh, but I, it's not grape. All right, now we have our primary color palette. This is kind of cool. We're actually going to combine these colors to make new colors before we make the treats. That's kind of cool. It looks a lot like MS Paint. It reminds me of doing the same thing with MS Paint. And they've included a color guide, which I think I'm actually gonna try out. I'm just curious to know how accurate they are. Okay, so orange is one yellow, one pink. How much should we fill it up? That's orange-ish, I suppose. Blue and yellow should make green. That I know from uh, my studies. Everything is very fragrant. I smell all three flavors pretty strongly. Red plus blue equals purple, or so I'm told. That's pretty purpley, a little dark, but pretty purpley. Oh, and you can just dilute the colors to make new ones. It wants us to make a pink or pink. Okay, I have to pick, I've only got four slots left. I'm not gonna make my own mystery color, I don't think. I think I'm gonna stick with what they got here. We'll do brown. It's red, blue, yellow. Is that brown? I don't know, that's like swamp green. I don't know about that one. Yellow and half blue. These are just different shades of the same colors now. Yellow, half blue. The thing is, I'm running out of, I'm running out of yellow, I'm running out of red, I'm running out of blue. I may just bail on the other ones. I'll do the light purple, but I really don't have much red left. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna leave it at that. Some of the colors turned out okay. I gotta say the two shades of green are really close together. So were the two purples. Was, were they both supposed to be purple? I kind of forgot what that top one was supposed to be. That was fun though. I didn't expect so much creative control there. Okay, now we gotta make the gummies. You pour in the powder and then you rake it like a zen garden. Is this just gelatin powder? Does gelatin powder smell like anything? There's such thing as gelatin powder, right? Now this is fun. This is something I can get behind. I'm really taking to raking this powder here. Maybe I need my own little zen garden. Once the powder is flat, you put the mold into the powder, then you color the powder, and then you pull the gummy out of the powder much like you would cat poop from a litter box. That's a very creative process. Okay, we can't do the lion or the candy. I thought we were gonna be able to do the expert designs, but we don't have either of the cutouts. Let's try and do the train. 
I'm gonna try and recreate the train from the, the cover of the box. Okay, so the train's gonna be difficult. It's got a blue body, a pink spout, and green wheels. There's also some uniquely colored windows here. Um, still gonna do my best to recreate it. We'll see. I should probably do the body first. Now, can you layer the colors? I feel like if I put another color on top of it, it's just going to uh, turn brown. So here we go. Yeah, the, the pink window is a no. Plop, plop, plop. Eh, eh. Plop, eh. Well, I'm done, but I'm not gonna call this one a success. It looks like it could turn out to be a very nice looking candy, but it does not look like the one on the box. The one on the box had very defined wheels and windows. Mine does not. Mine is more of just a regular gradient, uh, nothing really defined. It looks okay though. I mean, it doesn't look bad, it just doesn't look correct. Not being able to layer the colors is gonna make it difficult. How did someone make a lion like that? I just don't believe it. I'm supposed to wait for a minute. I don't know when I started waiting. I don't think it's been a minute. All right, moment of truth. Uh, how are you supposed to remove it? Okay, the directions literally just say remove. Kinda looks like I wanna push down on the candy while I pull up on the... Oh, actually it just all kind of comes on up like that. Choo choo, there it is. It looks pretty good at the front. Uh, the back just looks like a powdered mess. <laughs> weird, ah, weird. It looks like a train. <laughs> That is pretty cool. I mean, you're not gonna fool anybody into thinking that it's a piece of candy that you bought at the store, but the fact that it stays in one little clump like that is really neat. Okay, obviously I'm gonna make more before I try any. I think if it sits a bit, it might solidify a bit more as well. I'm gonna try to recreate the second half of the train this time. My first strategy was to do the base color and then do the accents. I'm gonna do it backward this time. I think if I do the windows and the wheels first, I could just fill in the background with the yellow when I'm done. Okay, so first up, let's do the pink wheel and window. Ah, uh, the window got away from me, unfortunately. How do they fit three windows on this thing? Impossible. Window number two. Window number three. That just looks great. <laughs> I think this is gonna turn out just like the one on the cover, exactly. Oh, it's so weird. Something about all this powder coming out in one little chunk is just super strange. There's the caboose. It looks... It looks bad. I'll be, it looks bad. Oh my God, it's like it drove right off of the cover. <laughs> okay, now it's time to get creative. Screw the box, I'm not looking at the box. I would like to do multiple gummies at once. It's a little annoying doing one at a time, so I'm gonna do some smaller ones. Okay, I'm gonna make the apple. Let's go ahead and go with a regular apple here. Okay, I screwed that one up. Easily, I screwed that one up. I'm gonna try to make this a, like a Christmas teddy bear. That looks <laughs> kind of Christmassy. Surely I can do a good looking candy.
I don't think any of these are gonna turn out looking right. It's a lot harder to do that dropper technique than you might think. The first drop tends to go kind of where you want it to go, but once you get that second drop on there, it just, it's everywhere. Uh, while I'm taking a moment to let this candy sit, I'd like to say, Merry Christmas. That's it. This one's really sticky. Ah! Ah! Plop. This one kind of looks like a sour gummy. It still smells very good. I'm into the smell now, it's smelling pretty good. And the candies look, I mean, I think they look okay. They don't look professional by any means, but for a powder candy kit, I think we're doing all right. So I've used all of the included shapes here, and I think now it's time to go off book. I could just keep making apples and trains, or I could use the rest of my gummy powder to make something truly great. Okay, to really keep this video Christmassy, I've looked up a picture of a Christmas tree. Nothing special, just a Christmas tree. I think it's a picture from a store. But my goal now is I would like to recreate this picture on the candy canvas. I feel like I've practiced and learned enough to where uh, this should be pretty doable by now. So first things first, we gotta get the gummy powder nice and smooth. I'm trying to learn from my layering mistakes in the previous candies. I think the first thing I should do is the tree. We've got a nice green here. Just suck that up. Oh, we've got all the green. Trees are like triangles. Well, I'm out of this <laughs> shade of green. We're going to the shade of green that's right next door. I don't remember what the difference is supposed to be. They look pretty similar. I think I should be okay. That's basically the, basically the same thing. Now let's do some presents. We need some presents under the tree. Box there. This one here is a new iPod. This one here is probably some type of kitchen utensil, I would assume. I think this one's just a gift card over here. I'm taking some creative license here with the picture, but on the left side, I'd really like to put a dollhouse all wrapped up. So if we really want to convey that a dollhouse is inside the present, we just got to focus on the little details here. Perfect. On the right side, we've got a stocking, a green stocking. We need to use a different shade of green so it's set apart from the tree. Okay, there's, there's the stocking right there. That actually might have been a better tree color. That looks a little more leaf colored to me. While we're at it, there's a wreath in the top left corner we can do. Okay, now I wanna do the curtains. The, the red curtains in the background are really striking. It's kinda of why I picked this picture, actually. So I wanna make sure I render them correctly. Okay, there we go, we got the curtains. It's, it's actually kinda of coming together. I'm gonna use the dark purple for the, the window in the back. I know that the wallpaper is kind of like a blue, but I think I'm just gonna stick with the purple uh, just to round it out. Uh-oh, that doesn't look great. Well, I poured way too much. Can I pour it out? Is it too late? Uh, oh, that's a bad idea. Uh, well, it's too late now. I was too lazy to stand up and get a napkin. It was too late. I think maybe if I got a paper towel, I could have dabbed the purple coloring off the top. Uh, it'll be fine. I'm gonna let this one sit. Uh, for a little bit longer than a minute. It needs a bit more time to dry, so I'm gonna put that off to the side, actually. I think this postcard is just supposed to be a place to put the candy, like just to display it on. I mean, the cover of the box has them in front of some type of pond, so maybe you get different background sheets. Oh yeah, you do. Draw your land. Arrange the gummies on the land sheet. Draw my land. I don't think the backgrounds really matter that much. It's kind of just extra trash, but uh, it's still kind of cool. 
Here's my kawaii gummy world. All right, we waited long enough, time to try them. They've solidified a pretty good amount, actually. They're uh, pretty hard, a little crumbly. You're gonna dust the powder off the back though. All in all, not too bad. If I had to compare them to another candy feel-wise, they're kind of like Sour Patch Kids. They kind of got the same texture feeling, even the powdery outside. Uh, the only difference is they're a little wet, a little sticky. Also, they look bad. <laughs> that's another difference. Well, hey, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. The flavors all melt together. I can't tell grape from lemon from soda. It just kind of tastes sweet like candy. The texture is also like loose. Like when it's in your mouth, it just feels like it was made out of a powder. Like the structural integrity just kind of breaks down a bit. That's really not bad. If it weren't for the powdery outside, you might be able to put these in a bag and sell them. I mean, you'd sell them as cheapo candy, not as a high-end candy, but I don't know, I, I might eat them. It's just weird how firm they get. How do they firm up like that? I think I've said this before, but the sweet poppin' cooking kits are always the way to go. I guess that's not true. If you want an experience that has the bad tasting thing at the end, sometimes you wanna make a weird thing that tastes like garbage. But the sweet ones are not that bad. They're, you know, probably a step past edible, honestly. They're pretty good. Even this uh, moldy looking one is gonna end up tasting pretty nice. I wonder if it would be better with more distinct flavors. Once you start mixing the colors together, you really lose the sense of what's lemon, what's grape, but that's probably because the flavors are supposed to be mixed together, so they needed to taste good together. Would have been interesting to get some more distinct flavors though, make a specifically apple flavored candy, or even mix and match some flavors that maybe you're not sure go together. That sounds like a good time. I'll take it back. That apple, it was like 99% grape, and that is all I tasted. Yeah, I just said that you couldn't tell the difference between them, but I lied. Let's uh, check out my masterpiece over here. It's still looking a little wet, but pretty good. It's still looking a little wet, honestly. It doesn't even look like a candy. It really just looks like I made a watercolor painting, like a really bad watercolor painting. It's weird how different the textures are. Like this area here is nice and firm, but over here where I spilled the extra coloring, it's like slick and, and squishy. I don't think it's entirely ready to come out of the casing just yet, um, but I'm ready. God, ah, uh, it's gross. <laughs> Extremely sticky, very sticky. Smells a lot like grape. Well, here's my art. Here's my art candy. Ugh, the wet parts are so sticky. Ah. Before I eat it, let's play a quick game. See if you can spot the difference between these two pictures. All right, here we go. I'm gonna go with the sticky side last. I actually feel like I taste the lemon in this one a lot. Lots of lemon. In fact, now that I'm thinking about it, if you could just go out and buy gelatin powder, you could probably do this at home a lot better. You gotta pick up some little molds, but you could get food coloring and flavors and really have total control of what you wanted your candy experiments to look like. Would it be worth all that trouble? Probably not. You're probably better off just paying six bucks and getting the pop and cooking kit. Well, all right, that's it. I'm done. No doubt this is the easiest pop and cooking kit we have done so far, and no doubt is it the most tasty. The, again, the real upside to pop and cooking's sweet kits are that they're actually pretty fun to eat. It doesn't taste like a high-end candy. It still is powdery and a bit strange, but it's fun to make something that is also fun to eat every once in a while. In conclusion, this was a pretty tasty and a pretty fun pop and cook and kit. 
Definitely the best tasting one that we've done on the show. I don't think it's the most fun one that I've made. Uh, I wish there were a few more steps. Really, it's just food coloring that you put into a powder. Meh. I like how the burger had multiple elements, like the bun, the burger, the fries, even like the box that I got to make. This one definitely seems like it was made for a younger age group in mine, and that's fine, and it's still fun to do. I just think that I kind of like when these are a bit of a disaster. So next time we do a pop and cooking kit, we'll probably go back to the chaos of savory. Now before I go, I'd like to take a moment to say thank you to this video sponsor, Honey. Shopping online is supposed to be easy, so why is finding coupon codes that actually work so hard? I once saved a child's life by pulling them from a burning well, and finding online coupon codes that work is still the hardest thing I've ever done. Honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. To use Honey, just install the plug into your browser and then shop online as you normally would. When you're at the checkout, click the Apply Coupon button that drops down. Sit tight for a few seconds as Honey scans every promo code on the internet and just watch the prices drop. Honey supports over 30,000 online stores and has found its over 17 million members over $2 billion in savings. If I had to choose between saving a child from a burning well and saving money with Honey, well, I'd choose Honey every time, no contest. So don't pass up on getting the best coupons when you check out online with Honey. It's free to use and installs in just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash brutalmoose. That's joinhoney.com slash brutalmoose. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. I couldn't think of a really clever ending this time, so I just decided to announce it. The video is over. That's just life. Sometimes things just end. Merry Christmas.